Friday of the month, right? This is yeah. the second time that I do the show with you. Okay, but I'm trying, is, this is the last oh. Friday of the month. Um, I think this is the last Friday of the month or not. Yeah. It's, it's the, the third Friday of the month, which means, right. hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, we may not know what day it is, but we know that it's the last Friday of the month, which means it's time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Dr. Gustavo Tolosa, where he not only prepares a fantastic, easy recipe for you, but... There may be some piano music involved. Please welcome Gustavo. Nice to see you again, all the way from Argentina. All the way from Argentina. Yes, thank you, AJ, for having me the last Friday of each month. I really enjoy it. I right. Some of it's actually the fourth Friday because there might be an occasion where there's five Fridays in a month. Right. So just right. not to confuse the situation, you are the fourth Friday of the every fourth. month. Okay. Yeah. So if there is five, if there are five, then I'm still on the fourth. You're still the fourth. Yeah. Because I, I know it really gets confusing. I feel bad for the people on week four because they're like, well, what day am I on? It's well, always I, yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. So well, tell right. us what do, what have you been up to since? Well, the last you time? all know I'm the plant powered pianist. You know, that's a quite a quite um, a, a mouthful to say, but I am a concert pianist and, and I function on plant so um yes today i'm going to play some music for you while we do the show and yes um my expertise has become in the last 10 years that i've been a whole food plant-based um you know eater um i have developed these simple meal i call them meal ideas because people can change them i don't call them recipes really uh, but here we go. So what, what, what we all like, I think, we love crunchiness. So I get this question a lot from some of the people that I, that I work with. And so this webinar is the crunchy webinar, okay? Um, I have two main uh, meal or ideas for today and an extra third a bonus. And uh, what I focus on is three or four ingredients, easy, delicious, and f things that have as much water and fiber as possible for detox and for weight loss. So one, having lived in the South for a long time in Texas, okay, um, I loved when I was not a whole food plant-based a follower i love to eat the fried green tomatoes and and i love the movie as well so um those fried green tomatoes are amazing so uh this week for the first time in 10 years okay i made um fried although they're oven baked or they could be air fried uh, green tomatoes and they were so delicious that i ate every single one of them. And I also made something that I call anger management potatoes. And you will see, um, you will see why. Okay, wow. so. That's interesting. So you're gonna make your version of fried green tomatoes. I am, I am. And I, I don't want people to complain and, and say, well, but you're using some processed food because I'm going to use some um, uh, cornmeal or polenta, but it's a little bit, and like I said, it's not something that I use every week. It's the first time in 10 years. And I will probably make these maybe twice a year for something for a special occasion. So, but it's mostly, mostly we're eating tomatoes basically. So let's let's go with it. And, um, um, and then at the end, I would like to uh, leave you all with a little bit of musical trivia and a little bit of music and of course, answer questions if anybody has questions okay all so all right well let me start let me start started. the video okay so all right first, all right first i'm going to put us in uh, gallery mode then i am going to do share screen and oops wait i think i have to hmm this is the part that's hard maybe i gotta put it oh man all right let's see if this will work oh gustavo it's not where it's supposed to be 
<laughs> oh, well, this is why it's so hard because it, it's it's in my downloads. What happens if I open it? Let's see. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I... Well, well, you do that. Oh, I'm gonna... Okay, good. Now I think I can do it. Okay. Okay. All Let right. Me just uh, cancel this for now. If you want to be okay. All right. Give me a sec. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not a techie. Okay, let's see. <laughs> now I think it'll work. I think it'll work now. All Tell right. me if you see it. Okay. Share. Yeah. Are okay, we... perfect. And so now Wait. let's, uh, oh, you know what? I need to get us. I want to get rid of us first. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I don't want us to be. So let, let's turn off our cameras and now share screen. Okay, guys, here it is. So we will start by putting these small potatoes in the instant pot for three minutes. And uh, this is about a pound. Actually, it's a little bit less, but that will do. What's happening? So we will start by putting these small potatoes in the instant pot for three minutes. But you can do any mix you want. You know, those pre-made mixes are great, or you can mix your own. So we will start by putting these small potatoes in the instant pot for three minutes. And uh, this is about a pound. Actually, it's a little bit less but that will do for now. You can make less if you want. Um, these are going to be good eaten fresh. I don't think they're very good when they're left over. So let's put them here in the instant pot. You want the potatoes to be well cooked. And um, 
if I need them to be softer, I will put, you know, I will put them for another minute or so. But we'll see how they come out in three minutes. In the meantime, there it goes. In the meantime, I'll tell you what I have here. Let me move the camera. This is going to be for our next little recipe here. And this is half a cup of cornmeal, one fourth cup of panko or any other flour like tina flour or any other flour you want, one fourth cup. Then you will need one teaspoon of potato starch or corn starch or some kind of starch. And if you're not allergic to pepper, you will need to put about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, freshly ground. And I have also added half teaspoon of onion powder, half teaspoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of oregano. But you can do any mix you want. You know, those pre-made mixes are great, or you can mix your own. Just make sure that you use uh, half a teaspoon or at the most a teaspoon, okay? Don't put too much. Okay, so this is going to be for our next, okay, our next, our next simple recipe. So I'm going to go over here. Hold on. And I will, um, okay, so I wanted to make uh, fried green tomatoes, but they're going to be oven baked, still very crispy. But I couldn't get uh, green, green. This is the most green I can get. They're really hard. They're, they're not I mean, you can't use this for anything else, for a salad or anything, because they're hard and they're pretty green. But they're not, you know, green, green. So this is, if you can get green, green tomatoes, uh, do that. I have four here, and I'm going to cut them in slices, okay? And I'll show you. And that's big. I'd like them like this. And uh, so I will probably get see, one, two, three, four. Did you know that you can plant this, cover it with dirt, and you will get tomato plant? Okay, so I'm going to do that with all these. And while I do that, I will tell you about something I don't know if you know this, but you all know I'm a professional concert pianist, a musician, and um, I love opera. I know that to many people, opera sounds like this. Um, boring thing to do, <laughs> but not long ago, two or three months ago, I took a friend of mine to an op opera. He'd never gone to an opera. And um, by the end of it, he was so immersed in it. And he, and he was crying. We saw Madame Butterfly. He said that he had never <laughs> cried in a play, much less in an opera that he had never been to. And um, if you think 250 years ago, 200 years ago, there were no, there was no TV, <laughs> you know, there was no internet, no phone, no Netflix. One of the main forms of entertainment was actually opera. And it wasn't this serious, I mean, it could be, 
but it was very popular. It was how you uh, went to have fun. And so let me stop there and now tell you that here I have half a cup of water and half cup, I mean, half a cup of water and four tablespoons of coconut aminos, okay? Let me move the camera a little. I'm going to dip these there. Hold on, now it's time to turn on the oven. I'm going to warm up the oven at 400. It could even be 425. And I showed you before what this mixture has. You can hear the instant pot. It's uh, a pressure there. All right, so I'll continue with my opera story in just a minute. But let's start, let's dip these. Now, this could be just water, okay? You don't have to add any uh, soy sauce or aminos or tamari or anything like that. So let's see. You might say, but Gustavo, this is processed stuff here the cornmeal and the flour. Yes, you're right. Do you know how many times I have made these in 10 years? None. This is the first time. If I cannot have, eat something like this that is mostly whole food once every 10 years, then I'll just jump off a cliff, okay? <laughs> It's just a bit, it's something for a very every now and then. Okay, if I like these, I may make them once or twice a year, and uh, and I will accompany these with a really good side of greens, steamed greens, or with a salad. Okay, so I don't worry about this. I don't get so uptight about food in this manner because um, I don't, I'm not that way. But it's just, um, you know, if I, if I was making this uh, four or five times every week, that would be different. Even though this is such a tiny uh, layer, I mean, it's mostly the tomato. And I want to show you here. tomatoes, and I'm going to move the camera a little more here. So, okay, this should be really good. We're going to uh, eat these. You can eat them, you can dip them in hummus, oil-free, of course, uh, or you could have some kind of really good really good um, sauce that you can make, or you could use ketchup. I mean, you can dip them in, in, in any oil-free and hopefully salt-free sauces that you can make. Okay, so this is really good. You could also, in this mixture, you could use the California smoked balsamic, smoked hickory balsamic vinegar. And um, that would give it a smoky flavor. That would be really yummy. All right, and um, Let's keep breading these. I want to, to have a really good cover. And keep telling you that um, 
you know, 150 to 200 years ago, opera was something that it was like going to the movies. They were actually the soap operas of the time. Usually the theme was love and not in love or, uh, you know, just, just the, the, <laughs> the topics of humans, you know, loving somebody who doesn't return your love or, or loving somebody so much that you are willing to die for them or with them or things like that. And they also had uh, operas that were comic operas, you know, funny. People would go to the theater and it was a whole afternoon or a whole evening of fun. They actually took food and drinks inside the theater. They sometimes talked during the some of the parts of the opera. Sometimes they booed the performers. And of course, they always went to see the prima donna, okay, the soprano or the tenor, you know, the main characters do their amazing, their amazing virtuosic feats. And so I'm telling you all of this because while we wait for these to cook, I'm going to play you some of my favorite music from operas. And I'll tell you a little bit about the story and I think you enjoy it. But now I'm just going to leave it like that. The potatoes are ready. So I'm going to go ahead and put these tomatoes in the oven. And I'll show you what we're going to do with the potatoes, which is a lot of fun. Okay. I call it anger management potatoes. Let's put this in the oven at four. 25 and we will check the time. I want them really crispy. So it's probably going to take 45 minutes. So in 30 minutes, I will take them out and check them and see what happens. I might turn them over and then we'll see. It may be 30 minutes on each side. Are. And I'm just going to get a knife that it's not too sharp so that I can really tell if it's soft. It's not soft enough. So what I'm going to advise you is that you set the instant pot for five minutes when you make it. And that is probably going to do it. I hope you don't mind my informal cooking here because this is real life. This is how I, things happen here in the kitchen. So I'm just going to add two more minutes and go with that. Okay, let's check and see if we are soft. Yes. Okay. So five, you could even do six minutes. It'd be fine. We just need to be soft for what we're going to do. So now we do need to let them cool down a little bit. They don't have to be totally cold, but, but cooler. Because I'll show you what we're going to do.
So, I hope you enjoyed it. And let's go check on those tomatoes, which I'm sure they're done. Mm, they are doing very well. They're getting crispy. They're not done yet. We'll turn them over and cook them for another 30 minutes. My oven is now 450, okay? So I think you're safe and want to do 50 or 25 or 50. So here we go. Let's put them back in the oven for 30 minutes. And now I'm going, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those wonderful potatoes. So let's now move on to our next step here with these potatoes. Now they're cooled off and you can use a silicon sheet or parchment paper. And now we're going to get our frustrations out, okay? Or anger, whatever you need to do. <laughs> so we will smash these. Yeah, there you go. You know, like, don't like this, or I don't like, I don't know, maybe, you're mad at yourself or something, or mad at somebody. There you go. That's what you deserve. Okay, you could use a potato masher and just do this. I just, I like to use my fist, okay? I'm not a very, I'm not at all an angry person, but I just like to pretend. So, we will mash them. This will be very crisp, okay? And now what we're gonna do for the final touch here is add some spices. And so I have one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of um, rosemary, which I ground, um, and I put, I think, a teaspoon of um, oregano. So we're just gonna add some on top. Now, if you want, okay, with the water that I have in the instant pot, I will be going to wet my fingers, and I'll put some water there a little bit, so that this mixture will stick. And I'm gonna make it even better. This is also going to go in the oven and at the same temperature, 425, 450. And uh, it's going to take at least half hour. You do have to check because this is a lot of this is what you like. Well, I don't know, you know, some of you may like it really crunchy and brown, toasty, and some of you may not. So you just have to kind of check these. We're not going to turn over because the starch at the bottom, uh, the other side of the potato is going to give it that crust and make it crunchy. And, um, we're going to see how they come out. And I invite you to go to my website, okay, plantemus.com, and go to uh, webinars and go to live workshops and see my upcoming uh, seven day. We spend the week together and I show you meals, simple meals with three, four ingredients, and um, we have a great time. And we get back on the wagon and we stay on. We have wonderful support. So please go look at that and consider it. And this is going to the oven now. So 
the oven now has the potatoes and the tomatoes in it. And since the oven is on, why not use it and make something else? Okay, so I have a head of uh, cauliflower, which I'm going to give it a quick, um, probably one minute steaming here. It is a small head of cauliflower, but I'm going to steam it for one minute just to make it a little softer. And then guess what? I will cut it into smaller pieces. So I'm going to set it for one minute. And I will sprinkle some of this, make sure that I use for the potatoes that I have left over. And here it goes. One minute, okay? Okay, the cauliflower is done, so we will let it cool for a minute, for a few minutes, not just a minute, but, and then I will cut it. And to the oven as well. But let's check because the tomatoes have been in the oven now for an hour and I think they're done. So I'm going to move the camera. I'll try one without anything, and then I'll try one with ketchup or with any sauce you want to try. We'll see how it came out. Look at that. Mm. Let's go to the table. Let's try one without anything. going to cut you know large pieces but then I will go and cut smaller pieces roasted cauliflower is one of my favorite things to eat and you can make it in so many ways you can make them really spicy, you can make them more like um, Mexican spices or 
uh, just regular um, things like onion powder and garlic powder and, and um, uh, oregano, which is one of my basics, but it's one of, I think, the best. Uh, you could also have some rosemary, you could have some, oh goodness, you could have so many different spices, but um, I'm just going to use the one that I have here that I use for the potatoes because I have some left over and that I will put this of the flour in a bowl so that I can easily coat all the pieces. Put them here. You want, you can sprinkle some water in that so that the spices will stay out of it. Probably two or three teaspoons, and then just kind of mix it with my hands. So it's just to give it a hint of the flavor. If you want more, uh, you know, you can add more this mixture. And now we're going to put it in another pan lined up with uh, parchment paper or with some kind of a silicone uh, baking sheet. And we'll put it in the oven for also 45 minutes or so at 400 until it gets to the to the crunchiness that you like. Okay, so let's try it. Let's go ahead and spread this. Mm -hmm. I like to make sure that it's really well spread so that it will crispy. And many times I chop, I mean, not chop, but I cut an onion and like I order it or one of those smaller and I just put chunks of onions here. You could also roast garlic to make <clears throat> to make roasted garlic mashed potatoes. But I'm going to take advantage of the hot oven and put a big sweet potato. And and I will also warm up the tomatoes a little more so they get crispy and I will finish eating them. And that's it. Let's see how our potatoes are doing. I'm going to put this in the oven right now. Okay, so these, these are the potatoes. Let's look and see. Mmm. Yeah. They are done. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Let me try these for you. We will do a little tasting. Okay. Mm. Yes. Let's try these delicious crunchy um, well, you simply have to try 
This would be great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. Mmm. 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 I always try to include greens with this. So I would probably eat some sauteed spinach or kale with onions and garlic, or I would just steam it with some balsamic vinegar, but I always try to um, add greens. As you know, Dr. Esselstein really highly recommends that we have our five, six servings of greens, and the servings are the small, you know, it's the size of half of your fist. So it's not much, but you need to try um, to get your greens. Mm. And he wants you to chew the greens, not in a smoothie for the benefits of cardiovascular health. Okay. Cardiovascular health. While well, we wait for the cauliflower. Cardiovascular health. Okay. some balsamic vinegar. I think it's perfect the way it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you have enjoyed my three um, appetizers or snacks or lunch or dinner or breakfast ideas because you can combine these with other things with beans with rice um 
put them on top of why it's being restricted and um, with mashed potatoes, eat them with greens. I just cannot stop eating cauliflower. I love it. So let me say goodbye to you with one more piece of music. And I hope that you will be back for the next episode. Please stay in touch and sign up for my um, email distribution list. You can do that on my website. And uh, that is plantemas.com. And visit my YouTube channel also. I would love for you to click on um, subscribe and click on the notification bell. There's so much material there. You're, you're going to have enough to cook for a year. Okay, there's a lot and it's all free material. So I'll see you soon and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. We are back. Hello. Hello. Okay. Good. Right. Got it to work. Good. There's some questions in the chat. Boy, Gustavo, I think you need to come out with an album called Music to Crunch By. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Uh, Let me Stanley. tell you, those yeah. things were so crunchy, crunchier than I thought they would be. So very good no, i was you... answering comments in the youtube channel but i don't know what were people were writing here yeah and, you know. I'll, I'll read some of the comments and the questions and sorry that you could hear the typing but i was trying to answer them <laughs> in real life and I, I apologize i didn't realize i was turning my uh, volume off so it would be better but i guess it didn't play at all so thank you for letting me know that for next time all right so let's see um okay we got the sound back within just a few minutes. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here it is. Uh, TS would like to know, would tomatillas work in place of green tomatoes? Uh, what is the difference between a tomatilla and a green tomato? I love tomatillas, but I don't know if they're the same. They have a slightly no, sour flavor. They're not the same. And uh, I did answer that on YouTube in, because I think she wrote the same in the YouTube. And I said, I haven't tried it, but I don't think it would work um, there because a tom tomatillo is a completely different kind of tomato. It's um, a lot more sour and they're small. They're, they're usually, they're not big. Uh, the, the traditional uh, green tomatoes are just tomatoes that are green and they're big. Right. Um, I think they have a, di a very different flavor. Yeah. yeah. And people are asking for the recipes. Um, yes. Well, let me tell you this, because it's kind of silly. It, 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 you, you get some potatoes and you steam them and then you put them in a pan and you mash them. OK, so it's not like I have a it's not a recipe. It's just get potatoes, steam them until they're soft mash them with something or with your fist if you're angry and then put some spices on it and put them in the oven until they're crispy and the tomatoes the same you know you just slice tomatoes and you bread them with some kind of mixture that you like and you bake them but i did send you chef i don't know if you could later put it in the show notes i did type um, these simple directions uh, but that's that's basically it. It's not. I wouldn't call it a recipe. Okay, I will look for those now. And if you sent them, I am going to add them as we go on. Okay. Okay. Next question, which I saw. Uh, bum. Okay. Da, 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 da. Uh, could you do this with eggplant? Yeah. Yes, I've done it with eggplant, and um, you just have to cut them thicker because. Um, uh, they, they can get really dry, uh, but yes. And then once they're done like that, you could do an eggplant lasagna with that, like a lasagna parmigiana, and uh, of course without the parmesan. And then you put layers of eggplant and tomato sauce, and uh, maybe you have some, you have saute some greens and you put another layer like that, and you could do a lasagna like that. Nice. All right, let's see. There's um, Sharon says, my favorite opera is Mozart, La Noce <laughs> de Figaro. Yes, The Night of Figaro. Yes, that's a funny, that's a funny comic opera. Yeah. 
Marcia says, has anyone tried mixing chickpea flour and or almond flour with the ground cornmeal polenta? I haven't. I haven't. But uh, the main thing, the thing that makes this crunchy is the cornmeal or the polenta. Then, and that's one cup. Then half a cup of whatever you want. You, uh, it could be any kind of flour. Um, I, um, I use panko, but it could be anything really any other flour. It just has to be a cup of cornmeal and a half cup of the other. Nice. Okay, I'm, I'm searching through. The, oh, yeah, here's, I see. Yes, I see the, I see the, I see the uh, recipes and I'll, I'll add, guys, I'll add those in the show notes in just a minute. Show notes are only visible on YouTube though. You won't be able to see those on Facebook. Donna says the tomatoes and potatoes look amazing, but the music is fabuloso. Bravo. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Marianne is saying California balsamic would be good for dipping. Yes, that would. I actually, I did that. I, I used that. That's and Mor good. Morgan asks, let me get over there. How long in the instant pot for the cauliflower? One minute. Just one minute. Perfect. Okay, and it's just to get it, it's just to get it a little bit soft and moist so that the spices can stick. And I use the same spices that I use for the, the potatoes. I had some leftover, so I sprinkled that. But otherwise, you could use any spice mix from Mrs. Dash or from, you know, any salt-free mix would work. Great. Yeah, because they're, they're asking what seasoning mix did you add to the cauliflower? So it's whatever somebody likes. Yeah, what I do is always, uh, my, my favorite is one teaspoon of each. Okay, so one teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, and smoked paprika. And that's my go-to mix. And sometimes I add half teaspoon of Benson's Table Tasty to make it, to give it a little bit of salty taste. But that's it. How do you get that in Argentina? No, I bring it. Uh, the the table, the Benson's table tasted. <laughs> I bring it with me. So okay. usually there is a suitcase, specially you know dedicated to food to bring. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Oops, where did the chat go? All right, I'm just going through them one by one. Okay. Uh, Marianne wants to know, do I need to buy a dehydrator instant pot in an air fryer? Well, I think it depends on what your goals are, but I would say yes, at least to the instant pot and probably to the air fryer. Not everyone needs a dehydrator, but they are fun if you have them. Yeah, yes, they are. You know what I find with the with the air fryer is that I can't make a large amount. So the, I, the reason I did it in the oven instead of it at the air fryer is because I could make a lot more uh, tomatoes and potatoes at one time. Uh, so that's why. Okay, good. Are the brown spots of the cauliflower okay to eat? You know, I've never personally seen a brown spot on cauliflower. Well, sometimes they, sometimes uh, you um, they can get a little brown. In uh, maybe this video showed something, but maybe it was the light. But I didn't have it that much. But when when I see really dark or black spots, I do take them out. Um, I I don't I guess it's I don't know if it's good to eat. I I do I do scrape it off. Good. All right. Let's see. Else we have or you I thought he was going to say he always pairs strings with starches <laughs> that's funny yeah everybody said they enjoyed the music it was wonderful oh uh, somebody's saying the tomatillo is like a large berry have you ever have you ever made anything with tomatillas? I like them so much. I make a green salsa with them. Yeah, that's the only thing that I've made the the sauce. Yeah, but other than that, I haven't used it for anything else. Uh, how many? I'm just curious. How many hours a day do you practice piano? It varies. It varies. My 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 goal, you know, um, it's been a what, 50 years of playing the piano, half a century. So I have developed my technique and repertoire. So I don't need, I used to practice eight hours a day when I was young. But um, now, 
my goal is three hours. So, um, and sometimes I get two and sometimes I get four, depending on if I have a concert coming or if it's really difficult music, but that's the average three hours. And do you do it all at once? That's really dedication. I mean, don't your fingers get tired? No, my fingers, I could act, I could play, if you have good technique, you could play for hours and hours and you will never get tired. No. So you have to practice three hours a day. That just shows, uh, that's incredible dedication. That's dedication, like in your book, when you talk about the seven C's, that's commitment, <laughs> you know, and a lot of, um, what is the other C that you, because you do mention. Consistency. By, a violinist, yeah, a consistency, yes. People don't realize how people at the top of their game, whether musicians or athletes, they spend Athlete. a lot of time yeah. doing their craft. Exactly. Even when you see the great athletes or anybody that has achieved greatness, um, if you don't continue practice, you lose it. And uh, so, do you ever do you ever play in Argentina? Do you ever give concerts? I do. I actually next month I have two concerts, and um, at least one of them is going to be broadcast live. So. I will share the link in my YouTube channel if people want to watch it. Will that be before you come on again? Because I'm happy to share the link as well. It's going to be on March 11th, so it's not going to it's going to be before. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, you know, we can add it to the show notes of, of the existing shows. That's true. That's true. OK. Wow. Well, that's fun. Well, good. I just lost the chat. That happens occasionally. So, <laughs> okay. you know, let's see. I don't think there's any more questions. There was one on where to buy California balsamic. So I put a link and okay. uh, there is also the, the recipes are in the show notes now. Yeah, just get creative because that's what I think we all um, need. We can get into this idea of tra you know chasing recipes all the time and people sometimes give up because of that and i would hate for people to go back to eating to not eating healthy because they think that they have to do a new recipe every day or buy tons of food and no you can just get potatoes and tomatoes and and then some greens to eat with them and that's a wonderful meal so uh well, yeah easy simple and crunchy and crunchy <laughs> yeah oh, that, that was a great recipe thank you so much gustavo it's nice to see you again me too i really enjoyed yeah it's look forward to together. seeing you next month and if you do you take requests either for recipes or for um yes pizza? yes yes please uh well like i said if if you if you all want to go to my website there's a place to to subscribe to my email list or send me an email you know <laughs> my email is it's uh, my website is plantemus. So info at plantemus.com. And plantemus came from combining the word plant with music. So that's why it's called plantemus. Um, sometimes people don't know why. Do you ever play Flight of the Bumblebee? Yes, yes, I have played that. And I have played the one minute waltz and many of the famous, you know, popular. Thing. What is the hardest piece for a pianist to play? Oh, well, anything that is composed by Friedrich Chopin or Franz Liszt, those two were some one of the most some of the most virtuoso pianists in history. So the etudes that they composed, the study pieces, um, are extremely difficult. And if you're not careful, you can ruin your wrist and your hand and injure yourself for life. So oh you really God. have to know how to do it. Wow. How did Beethoven compose music when he was deaf? Beethoven, yes, there is a lot written about this. And Beethoven um, could, had an, in, an amazing inner ear and he could hear music exactly as um, like he was getting dictation from angels or whatever you know i don't know but he could hear uh, all of it all a whole score for violin flute clarinet piano all at once and he would just get it and write it i you know i'm not beethoven obviously but i can i can be in a very silent place and um, i can i can get a score like this one Okay, and I can and hear, as I read it, I can hear the music. So it's just because of the training that we have, you know.
Interesting. Well, you know, I just learned on, um, we were, you know, we're still in the middle of the Truth About Weight Loss Summit that Ben and I can't remember if it was Ben or Jerry, but one of those two were born without the ability to smell and he still was able to make ice cream. It's, yeah, yes. It's, uh, Fascinating. Some, Gina said, Have you ever tried zucchini flowers? I haven't. I have not. Me no. neither, but they sound great. Oh my God. I, I don't have my glasses on. And Randy said, my last recital piece was Mozart's Sonata in C minor at 16, but I, I didn't see the I in recital. So thank goodness I didn't read it. <laughs> that would have been a big faux pas. <gasps> oh, well, like, one, what yeah. Heck? One time, one time someone wrote to me about giving a, a rectal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You have to get that eye in there. Oh my God, that's hilarious. What a great note to end on. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you next month, the fourth Friday, whatever that is, of March. Is. Okay. Right. And have a great concert. Thank you, Gustavo. Yeah, thank you all. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Oh, no. Uh, 2 p.m. I'm, I'm sorry, it's 2 p.m. all week because of the summit that ends on Sunday. And we have back Dr. Melissa Mandala and Dr. Michael Yu for the Overcoming Autoimmune Disease Hour. And they're going to be talking about mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance. Oh, wait, one question more for you. Donna wants to know, uh, how many pianos do you have, Gustavo? I have two. This one and that one <laughs> how the heck did you get them from uh the united states to argentina how no does no these pianos i bought them here okay i was gonna say that would be a hard uh no uh, i gave up i had a beautiful baby grand piano in dallas and i tried but it's just so expensive that i i could buy a, i could buy two here uh and still have money left over no no it wasn't worth it Okay, great. Well, thanks so much. See you next month, Gustavo. And see you, everyone. Okay. Take okay. care. Bye.